After 10,000 years, we're back. The original Power Rangers Megazord is the peak of mech design. I know this because I am totally, completely nostalgia-pilled. It all started when I was little. When you go to school thinking about Power Rangers, then come straight home to stay up late watching Power Rangers, you have no control over the media you consume becoming a core memory, right? Right! One such core memory is the original combining Megazord toy, the hottest toy of 1993. It was certifiably too hot to handle. So there's no way anyone was getting their hands on one of these bad boys at a KB Toys. Since I never owned one, and I am now an elderly millennial desperately grasping for his youth, I'm gonna make my own. Starting with the Triceratops Zord, piloted by the undisputed best Power Ranger. Ha! My name is Billy. I'm starting with this spray bottle because the neck here already has a perfect built-in Triceratops head. It's got the frill and the nose horn zone right here. The first step is to liberate the head shape from the bottle using a fresh craft blade. I was a bit sloppy around the edges, but we'll be able to hide this hangnail later. For now, I'm just going to continue building out the silhouette. For its bird beak type mouth, I'm using this vintage 90s Beyblade, which I lost the original spinner for, but all I really need is this cone. This 90s plastic is built real tough though. I had to cycle through all of my various scissors before finally landing on my Decepticon looking alien technology scissors. Actually, scissors are a bad choice. Let's use the miter saw to finish bisecting the bird beak. One thing to be said about trying to glue various cheap plastics together is they require a lot of sanding if you want the glue to adhere to the surface. Oh. That was fully sanded, actually. I blame this cheap oil-based bottle plastic. I'm just not good at this. I'm actually just gonna keep brute forcing this until it stops falling apart. For the bottom jaw, I want something else, like this dollar store robot leg. Its mate was previously used to make a chainsaw man head in a previous video. But I also have a few others saved up because I love these thick robot thighs. To lower the chances of super glue breaking apart again, I'm using my favorite hack of filling the inside of whatever I'm building with a gallon of hot glue. Oh, for the nose horn, I have just the thing. This is my bits box of technically not Lego, which includes this horn from a set of dollar store not Lego. And as long as we're getting all horned up, we might as well tackle the other two horns above the eyes. But for these, I'm taking some creative liberties, of which there will be many on this build, and reinterpreting the horns as a couple of artillery cannons, complete with rivets, and a whole bunch of these hole things. Heat holes? I'm not really sure what this Swiss cheese motif is, but I'm sure someone does, and they're telling me right now. Thank you. Using a couple more horns, I'm chopping off the horn to save for later, but using the remaining rhombus as a triceratops eye. It's now at the point where I want to start detailing all of this smooth spray bottle plastic. And the best candidate for the job is another spray bottle exactly like the first one. I cut out various sections and fit them over their matching contours and curves to give an extra layer of dimension that hides its spray bottle origins. And then a bunch of rivets to tie the layers together and further pull this design into the steampunk or diesel punk aesthetic. Speaking of aesthetic, I know I held up the original Megazord as the epitome of mech design, but it's not exactly what I'm going for here. I'm also influenced by the mechanical design of Hayao Miyazaki and Akira Toriyama, so I'm expecting a lot of weird curves and rivets. Though I'm also pretty limited by the shape of whatever trash is kicking around in my junk closet, so I honestly have no idea where this design is going. At this point, it doesn't exactly look like a Triceratops, but once again, creative liberties. Look at all these Ceratopsians. The curves of the spray bottle have dictated that this is now a Bravo Ceratops, which was about this big next to a businessman. To thicken up these jowls and give the appearance of a more substantial slab of metal, I'm using a piece of foam core board trimmed to fit the shape of the mouth. The problem is the foam texture doesn't really blend well with that layer of plastic, so I'm using one of my favorite goops to add a smoother finish between the two layers. The finger lacks precision, but it's nice to be able to feel the smooth finish of the goop. 
Oh, shoot, man. There's no oops with goops. This is just an opportunity to spread it around with a wet brush for free weathering. After filling up the mouth gaps with some steampunk gear charms, the head is looking pretty good, but I want to start building up the body next. These are some of my favorite finds at thrift stores, partially finished educational model kits. Kids start them with the best of intentions, but once they reach the steps with the electronics, nope. I'm doing the best I can, but I'm unfamiliar with the circuitry. To be fair though, I would also ignore the electronics, but there's so much kit bash fodder here as well. Like this very nice bulbous head that belongs to Tobby too. The thing I love about Tobby 2's head is that it already includes this cutout area for neck articulation when it transforms from tank mode to being a foot. My friend Kayakosaurus sent me whatever this is, but it bends 90 degrees, so now it's a perfect robo neck. Speaking of, if you want to send me a robo neck or any cool trash, toys, and trinkets, I now have a P.O. box in the description. My neck was a bit too thick to mount inside Tobby 2's head, but now we're good. Then for this end section, this totally tubular toy to help with mounting the Tricera head. Alright, time to install my neck pivot. Then to make sure the pipe is lined up just right, I'm injecting a whole puddle of hot glue in the head and letting it rest until it's set. Set it and forget it. I can slide this on and off for easy painting later, but most importantly, this neck is fully functional. I did it! They're functional. Impossible! For the rest of the body, why not more spray bottle plastic? But first, this piece from a spray bottle nozzle goes right here just because it fits. Off camera, I trimmed the bottle so it can slot in place, but it's blocking that deep neck stretch in the back which is where this little something or other from that educational model kit from earlier comes in handy. I'm slotting it in right here to give a little more room for the neck frill when it's folded down. <laughs> Recently, I picked up one of these as a nice 90s kit treat and for kit bash garbage, but yuck, the gum tasted so much worse than I remembered it. It went straight to the trash. I can't stand bubble tape for you, not them. Oh no. Them is me? I'm using the two hemispheres as the covers for the future tank treads, as well as these two leg pieces from Tobby 2 for the front treads. I want to embed this pink hockey puck into the body for a more natural look, so I'm roughing out the space for it, then finessing the curve until it's the exact size of the container. This left me with a huge mess of fingernails everywhere, but after a little sweep up and a clean workspace, I was feeling a lot better. <laughs> After gluing the pieces in place with super glue, followed by many secret globs of hot glue on the inside for extra structural support, it was time to start filling the undercarriage with a whole mess of details. Here's a sawed off chunk of a label maker cartridge that was previously used to make some weaponry on a big robot elephant. This fits right here, so that's where it's gonna go. Off camera, I rotary tooled off a piece of Tobby 2's head to make room for this piece as the tank tread cover. Then I realized there's an unintentional gap here between the two body pieces, so I'm blending it together with a random chunk of plastic packaging. But for this circular space right here, I'm going to use the original piece from the model kit that's meant to go there. Now that's kit bashing. For a few of these other gaps and holes that you'll scarcely see, I have a growing horde of dollar store Final Faction toys that have just enough mechanical detail to look somewhat interesting. But I do want to cover these details up a little bit. These are my socks. But this is the cool piece of garbage that I really bought the socks for. Throw those socks away, but make sure you keep this great sci-fi grate. With enough of the body done, I want to take care of the tank treads next. These will be the bones for the tank treads, but for the actual treads, a layer of EVA foam cut into a decorative pattern with a fancy scissor. I finally discovered the official tank tread pattern after buying every pair at a Goodwill over the past year. Mm. 
Nice, that's looking pretty good. I think this cosplay EVA foam is too dense, so I'm going to try downgrading to the dollar store variety. That's what we're looking for. I'm gluing the pieces down on a strip of EVA foam with a slight space between each piece and... We get this. This, what's this? Oh, uh, sorry Bill, this is a method inspired by you actually, and your many mini tonks. Go check out the Bill Making Stuff video in what's the- What's this? The, this is one of your videos, Bill Making Stuff. And now we start the fancy part of bedazzling all of these chunks of foam with glamorous bits. What's this? Oh, oh don't worry about those. <laughs> While I don't plan for these wheels to roll, I'm still going to stab a toothpick axle in between them and cover it up with a bunch of robo bits to at least imply some engine action is happening under the hood. Then for the rear set of wheels, I'm going to need some unique U-shaped piece to help hold these pieces in place. Oh, maybe some of these metal horseshoe charms that have become obfuscated under forced channel lore? Oh no. I am spiritually and economically obligated to use up every horseshoe that I bulk purchased or else. Finally, the prophecy has been fulfilled. In truth, this would make a pretty bad tank, since the bottom is not armored and instead filled with mechanical nonsense, making its soft underbelly very vulnerable. But as a graduate of the Ghibli School of Mechanical Nonsense, I want to put my degree to good use. That means filling up any free real estate with meaningless junk like the backside which still looks like a spray bottle. For that, a remnant from a previous video. This is a Moon Rover toy that contributed parts to become Shrek Train. After cutting it into pieces, I'm using improper drilling techniques to put a hole in it. I'm stuffing in one of these pipe toys because I'm planning on sticking another tube up through the tailpipe as a way to connect a future Zord. Then a couple dollar store robot fists to fill up these holes in the back. After careful consideration, I've decided I really don't like that this straight up looks like a bubble tape container. I'm going to hide it using a classic favorite around here. I want this Zord to ultimately have a somewhat Ghibli-esque steampunk or diesel punk aesthetic, so I'm layering several pieces of this nut jar to resemble metal plating. This is not a Lego piece. It's something called BTR, and since it's not precious Lego, that means it's okay to ruin it and no one can get mad at me. This Lego clone cone will be the start of the Triceratops' tail, articulated by a fidget toy joint brutally attached with a lot of hot glue. In the Power Rangers canon, this tail is pretty much a cannon, so I'm attaching various beads and dollar store weapon bits to make it look like it would shoot some sort of something. Then to make sure it never falls off the bod, an entire stick's worth of hot glue hidden deep inside. Seal up the vault of those hot glue crimes with another piece and no one will ever know. I was on a walk the other day when I found this already drawn and quartered Chris Pratt. I don't need the mask, but I'm liking these gun bits as a couple exhaust pipes. Sneaking over to the front, I want to add some sort of piston connecting this round section to the wheel cover. Right now it's just a plain circle doing nothing, but by motivating it as some sort of rotating arm, it looks like it serves a function. Up on the top of the tank, I'm making an observation deck, but it needs a more deck-like texture. Luckily, I had some teriyaki for lunch seven months ago. This gives a nice anti-slip texture to the deck, but just so Billy is extra safe, some guardrails made from this cable management loop thing. This is the coolest truck bumper you've ever seen. I'm using the rail part as exhaust pipe extenders and the cow pusher part here because it looks vaguely claw-like to me. Here I'm making a ladder, which you might think is entirely unnecessary because Power Rangers don't really use ladders. 
are just really good at jumping to get into their zords. But I live in a very realistic Power Rangers universe with normal human-sized jumps and also safety concerns. And now it's time for rhinestone rivets. Usually I would show the process of gluing these on, but... Not this time. Now that it's covered in a bunch of dots, we'll finish up with a few details, like a random pipe connecting from here to here to pump the Zord juice. Then to hold the pipe in place, I'm using the tubular handle from this bag to create a bunch of pipe straps. That should be the final detail, so I think that means it's time to paint. Oh wait, just kidding, I almost forgot the back of the dino head. Just need a few more minutes. I'm loading up the back of the frill with a little bit of everything. You can't really see it when it's mounted on the body, so I'm just crowding it out with junk volume to distract the eye if you happen to get a glimpse back there. I was running desperately low on perfectly shaped bits for the rest, so I puzzle pieced in some chunks of EVA foam as metal plating. And now, it is truly time to paint. Starting by slopping on a coat of black primer. Normally, I would spray paint outside, but it was full on ninja storming today. But I always welcome painting by hand, because it affords another opportunity to stipple that goop to a desired lumpy texture. Let's take a moment now to fully enjoy it in all its primed glory. Wow. The next step is to make the whole Zord metallic silver, but only in a tasteful, tarnished way. Which is why I'm trying to wipe off most of the paint from my brush so it only hits the edges, aka dry brushing. It's tempting though to coat the whole thing in a wet coat of shiny chrome because liquid cool. But in the case of dry brushing, liquid bad. I need that brush as dry as possible, leaving a nice dusting of silver on the edges but keeping some black paint in the recesses. That's looking okay, now scrape it all off. What? Only because I forgot to attach these cryptic zord symbols and gluing on top of paint is not ideal. I'm digging the silver look, but it needs its classic Zord color, so let's make it blue. For that, I'm trying out a painting technique I learned from scratch bashing, herein called Just don't paint the edges. Yep. So that's what I am going to do. Stipple on some sloppy blue. But keep those edges nice and dry, with silver paint to catch the eye. <coughs> a couple coats is all you need, or else the underlayer will bleed. Once everything was bright and blue, I moved on with a whitish hue. These colors, while nice, are solid and plain, so uh, prepare a wash that. <coughs> a wash that will not. Uh, rhyming is pain. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's not funny. Continuing on the painting lessons I'm stealing from Daddy Scratch Bashing, I'm creating a gradient from light to dark. But really, I'm not doing much, and just letting gravity take control of where the paint goes. Then, I'm reversing gravity and doing the same thing with a lighter blue wash on the other side of each panel. And as long as we're getting all wet, let's make a rust wash in my nasty brown can. I don't know the long-term health ramifications of breathing in odorless mineral spirits, but just to be safe, I like to wear a full respirator because... It could have unexpected results on the atmosphere. Some people have commented that I'm really overstating the dangers of odorless mineral spirits, but I don't know. It's very cool to follow the rules. This rust wash is mainly for the metallic silver areas, which means a cute little brown boop to every rivet. After the wash, I'm bringing back a bit of that silver edge highlight with a final dry brushing. Then for the final Zord griming step, dirt. I'm brushing it onto a few of the turbo zones to make it extra reader repulsive, but with that, this Zord is done, which means it's morphin' time. Triceratops! As always, thank you so much to all of the patrons that help this slow-moving Megazord of a channel keep lumbering along. But more specifically, and musically, thank you to these fine folks on Patreon, such as Uncle Dude, Brooke Bird, Julie Wood, Philip Bar, Joseph Baxter, Burb Holder, Parker Rosman, Bodie Logan, Muda 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 Parker Later, Alicia Evans, Jesse Ellis, Parker, Clink, Rosalyn Heidke, Marzan Oslo, Truett, Forrest, Margaret V, and Play Nicole G, Riley Jones, Cries Not So Art, Jordan B, Cordovalo Art, Cringe Gamer, Paige Luther, Sarah Rowan, and Isaac Marks. Hartfield, Hartfield, Kathy, Kayla, Brakowski, Eugenicious, Bailey, Irish, Cream Geek, Loves Pasta. Shelby, Rachel, Brian, Rio, and Ryan, Kids, Fit, Mobzilla, Zachary, Zanko, Will Do, Sick,
69. Felicity Reeves, just a top four crap style. Scott S and Pays, Sarah Swanlin, Atkinson Hayes, Crazy Cat, and Crazy Dave. Raluca Constantinanu, Sorin the Raven Dude, Adrian Haslinger, Amber Marie Matters. The Lady Rose Glass, Big Mouth Billy Bass, Pielas, Lucas, Matias Cortez, Indiana Kent, Nova B. Bibbins, Ego Heavy X, Goldilocks Alex, Harsburg, Julia Remke, Louie, Brain Shake 83, Amanda Ski, Milk Boy, Riley Meek, B. and Janie, Mimi, Oliver Zombie, Nick Flanagan, 111 Moinky, Kirby Love, Patrick Kennedy, Casey Summerton, Alden Thompson, Lisa Dan Brock, Unfortunate Sloth.